Hey everybody, welcome back. And for those of you following along with all these videos, we did equal to, so now we're going to do not equal to. It does the exact same thing as a triple equals except the exact opposite. So let's go ahead and run through a couple of our examples. The first one is going to be where we declare a variable and assign it to something. And we're going to check to see if undefined does not match. Oh man, that's a really poorly worded variable name. Undefined does not match is going to be true if declared is not equal to undefined. Okay, I guess it's not that bad. It's just kind of a confusing topic. So what we're checking here is to make sure that undefined does not match our, our declared variable. If it does not match, it means that when we apply not equals in between declared and undefined, we're going to get true. So it is true that undefined does not match our declared variable. Now, as you can see, unless you write things down and keep things straight as possible, it's very easy to get yourself mixed up with things like undefined, not equals, equals, not, and, or. All that kind of stuff can get very complicated. And the way I usually get around it is to try to make sure you name your variables as precisely as you possibly can. So let's jump back to this other one, which is we are talking about that weather person again. And is raining is equal to true, weather predicted rain is false. So the weatherman was not right is going to be equal to a comparison between is raining, let's move this over a little bit, and, uh, uh, sorry, we're going to compare is raining with weather predicted rain, and if they are not equal, using the not equals operator, then we know that the weatherman was not right. So if we run this, we're going to see that we get true, and if we, let's say we have a situation where the weather predicted rain, and it is raining, then the weatherman was not right is false. And again, once you start negating these variables, it can get very tricky. Your best bet is usually to write things down and have a good sense of what it is that both variables mean in both scenarios. If we keep moving, we have two more examples, uh, which uh, we're not, we're, we're gonna skip. The only reason that we're gonna skip them is because exactly what we just did in the equals section, uh, the only reason to skip it is because I'm feeling lazy, and that's not a good reason. So let's paste it in here. If we have an expected count equal to 10, an actual count equal to 9, then a variable called expectations not met set to a comparison between our expected and actual count using the not equals operator is going to be true any time that expected count is not equal to actual count. So if we run this, we're going to get true because expected count and actual count are not equal. If we were to change it to... Um, expected count equals actual count, then expectations not met is going to be false. Okay, and don't know what that character is, but not really something we need to worry about. Um, all right, so current string is equal to happy, next string is equal to sadness, happiness and sadness. Uh, strings do not match is going to be set, again, to a comparison between our two variables using the not equals operator. When they're not equal, we're going to get true, and if they are, well, let's not make it equal, let's just make it E. When they are equal, a comparison if they are not equal is going to give us false. So if you're confused yet, cool, don't worry though, it'll work itself out. Now, we are going to complete a function that takes in two scalar, Boolean number, or string parameters. Our function should create a variable and assign it to the result of comparing the two input parameters using the not equals operator, then return that variable. Below are examples of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function are not equal. So, same process that we're going to follow. We're going to paste the stubbed function in. Then we're going to grab a couple of uh, test cases, which are going to yield true and false. One where the two Boolean variables, sorry, the two scalar variables are, excuse me, the two scalar arguments are not equal to each other, which means that this function is going to return true. True, they are not equal. And for this one, 3 plus 7 is going to yield 7, or evaluate to 7, which is equal to 7, meaning that r not equal is going to be answered, or sorry, we're going to return the answer false. So, variable result, created it, assigned it to a comparison between param 1, not equals, param 2. Uh, same thing with not equals um, and triple equals versus not single equals versus not double equals. In general, always use not double equals. That's gonna, that's gonna be, because this actually is the same as basically triple equals, but just in reverse. If we use not equal, it's the same idea as that whole truthy and falsy, and you, you get some kind of slippery results that are not, not ideal, especially for beginners. 
So after we compare that, we're going to return the result. When we run this, we should see true and false. We do. Hey, and this thing's speeding up, so that's nice. Let's come back here. After we grab our function that has now been completed, let me paste it in here, run the test, and you know what kind of shape we're in. So one quick thing about truthy and falsy, uh, here's all you need so far. You may come across the idea of values being truthy or falsy. A true truth value, a truthy value is one that is considered true when encountered in a Boolean context. If a value is not truthy, then it is falsy. And the way you want to think about it is that these are the falsy values, everything else is truthy. So there are some times when exploiting this can be very useful. Um, the other times, it's not really useful for us to go into when this would be like really useful, but you do want to keep in mind that this can trip you up if you start using double equals. So in general, always use triple equals and not triple equals, which is a weird way to say it because it only has two equal signs. But what we're implying is that one of the equal signs here was converted to not. And when we have double equals, the way that we get the opposite of that is to convert the first one to not. Same idea. So not triple equals is going to allow us to make sure that we don't run into any of this truthy falsy stuff. And that's pretty much it. So that's all for working with Booleans. We're going to, of course, continue working with Booleans as we move through the rest of the course. But for now, those are the methods and operators that are going to be useful for you to know. Feel free to come back here if you get to a, net, like a future lesson and you need a refresher on any of this stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.